Hello, my name is Austin Belzner, and welcome back to the Austin B Media Podcast. But before we get into the podcast, I got to tell you how you can support my work. The way I find my work, whether it be a review of a movie I rent or paying for Zoom, my Patreon is the way you can help offset those costs. Patrons like MB Labula, Brian Scuttle, Joseph Davis of Sif Pop, Matthew Simpson of Boston Friday, Tom Blackburn, and more all help to make episodes like this possible. So thank you to all your lovely patrons out there. Beyond financial support, you get some pretty sweet perks in exchange for that financial support. Whether you're into 24-hour early access to my reviews and this podcast, monthly surveys, giving direct feedback, commentaries, and just about everything in between, consider becoming a patron for as low as $1 a month at patreon.com slash Media. You can also save 16% off if you decide to subscribe annually. On top of that, it, if you're not ready to subscribe for whatever reason, you can get a seven-day free trial for every single tier I offer, even the more expensive one. So with that, I hope you enjoy the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Austin B Media Podcast. I hope you enjoyed the Patreon ad read. It's something new I'm trying as a result of feedback that I got from some people in one of my Discord. But today, I will be discussing the box office phenomenon known as Barbie, along with my guest, Alicia Chaffins. Hi, Barbie. Welcome to the <laughs> podcast. And Hi, tell Barbie. everyone about your work. <laughs> Hi. So I have a uh, substack called MacGuffin or Meaning, where I usually uh, post weekly reviews of streaming movies and movies in the theater. And also just generally speaking, I post some essays usually about, I have a, a series going right now called Media, where I'm talking about like how different characters in the media over the years have shaped me and my views and also how I see myself in some different characters. I'm writing about BoJack Horseman because it's just one of my favorite right. shows. <laughs> It's deeply sad. I'll, <laughs> I'll have to send you. A, I'll have to send you a YouTube video that I just saw on YouTube a few weeks back of, of like a compilation of all the running jokes. Yeah, my favorite one is the. There's like a baby that he knocks over early in season one, and like we see the baby and mom like through the whole show. It's phenomenal, but it's a show that you can watch just for background gags. Like that alone mm. is worth watching. Like outside of the store anyway it's like a favorite so i'm writing about that i just finished a first draft on a book about the relationships in ted lasso because i also mm. love that show so that is going out to some early readers now but yeah so nice. hopefully that'll be a thing to look for in the next year but yeah but yeah I'm super excited to talk about barbie because it was easily my most anticipated movie of this year by a lot yeah it's interesting. And this kind of leads me into the first question of the expectations that Barbie set. Like when you first heard about like Barbie and Greta Gerwig, what was your thoughts and like how it evolved over the marketing campaign? Right from the jump, when I saw that Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach were connected to this, I was in. I remember seeing ads that were saying that Oppenheimer and Barbie were both releasing on the same week a year ago or more than a year ago before Barbenheimer was even a thing. And I remember yeah. being like, I'm going to go see Barbie because A, I grew up as a little girl in the 80s and loved Barbie. I had two sisters and we had the Barbie dream house and we played Barbies often. And also, just I love Greta Gerwig so much. I think she is just a fantastic filmmaker. And just, and I know I really enjoy anything that like Noah Baumbach does in terms of like writing and stuff. So to me, that was easily the movie I was so excited about. So yeah, from the jump, I was in. So <laughs> there was never a time where I wasn't excited about it. And then just, yeah, the more, I, but I really had no idea at all what we were in for i knew it was based on others the stuff that she had already done i figured it would probably have some kind of feminist storyline to it yeah i didn't think that i was like okay. okay because during my like journey with barbie it was like what is this gonna be and then it, it when the trailer started and there was like that parody of 2001 a space odyssey's opening okay, what is this movie? And 
And then to see the final product, I was like, oh, now it makes sense. Greta Gerwig's directing this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I know for me, that was where I came, but I loved that we had no real idea on what the story was going to be or any of those kind of things. The trailers were, I love it when a trailer does not tell me when it's not just like the mini movie. (laughs) I don't want to watch trailer the movie. It always frustrates me whenever a a trailer just tells me the whole plot of the movie. I'm like, yeah, cool. Do I need to see this now? (laughs) Yeah, that literally just happened this week. A Universal is Universal handling Argyle. I think so. Yeah, I think that yeah. is them. Yeah. So they released the trailer for Ar- Argyle this week, and I'm like, oh, I just saw the whole movie. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It still looks like an interesting movie, but I totally agree. Don't don't give me the whole movie. Give yeah. me some mystery. So yeah. So going in, I didn't. I assumed it would probably have some feminist leanings just because of Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach. So I assumed that. And that was it. And I knew I was going to love Margot Robbie because I think she's just a really talented actor. And I knew I was going to love Ryan Gosling. I was excited about the whole cast. I thought everything was going to be fun, but I really didn't know what to expect. Terrible. Yeah, I, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> yeah I, I had no way to expect... I got shades of it when we were talking about the 2001 parody, mm-hmm. but the mer- meta narrative is not what I was expecting at all That's um, fair. on consumerism and like all this stuff. I was just like, huh, I did not think this was going to be where it goes, but I'm glad it did. There's even the whole opening. I think it's in the opening where they go through all the history of Barbie. Mm hmm. Which is which was really fun because I remember having some of those. My sisters having some of those dolls. I think the Midge one. No, not the Midge one. There was like <laughs> one in the early two thousands that was like really weird. But yeah, it was interesting to see just how that evolved. But yeah, I always love Ryan Gosling. Didn't expect him to do what he did in this movie. Yeah. And just to say, we're not giving spoilers today. Maybe that'll be like another separate thing once it comes out on HBO, not HBO Max, Max or whatever. <laughs> or, uh, maybe that around then or maybe Oscar season or something like that. Because right. we all know I'm Just Ken is getting nominated for Best Original Song, right? Surely it has to. <laughs> it has to. I but would be disappointed otherwise. <laughs> I need, I am manifesting a performance of Ryan Gosling of singing Can You Feel the Kennergy to a crowd of 80-year-olds. <laughs> just like, and pointedly doing that. But anyways, yeah, I just, I, I think overall, I just didn't think of, think it was going to be this bombastic of a film. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so I guess that brings me to what are, what, when you actually did see the film, or actually, let's go back to something we, we t- um, did you do the double feature? I did not do the double feature. I didn't go see one and then the other. I did see both on opening weekend. I went to see Barbie on Thursday night. And then I went to see Barbie again on Friday morning. <laughs> and then Saturday afternoon, my husband and I went to see Oppenheimer. And yeah, like, it was a, I absolutely loved the energy of that like it was so Mm -hmm. neat to me because I love going to the movies like the first movie when I went to see Tenet when movies came back so Christopher Nolan again yeah I went to the movie theater and I'm there in my mask and everything and I was just crying just watching the welcome back to the movies little thing legitimately I cried because I just I love going to the movies. I love watching movies in general, but there is something very special to me about actually physically going to the movies. And I had missed it so much. So to go to a thing and see people dressed up and like all of that was so fun. So the actual like energy of that weekend was 
thrilling to me. I absolutely loved it. It was one of my favorites. I dressed up. I got myself an outfit because I was like, I'm going out for Barbie. I'm so excited. So I got this real neon nonsense kind of thing. It was so these pink sparkly shoes. It was silly, but it was so much fun. I loved it. So yeah, I missed that aspect of it. I wanted to get something like what I saw on social media. This person, I don't know if it was at an Alamo draft house or what where she was walking out of Oppenheimer and then goes into a quick change booth or something like pulls off the Oppenheimer thing and it turns into a Barbie outfit (laughs) but I actually did do the double feature and for anyone wondering here's the order I did I did the Oppenarby I did Oppenheimer first the logic being obviously Oppenheimer is going to be very depressing so I want to end my day with hey let's have some fun or at least th- that's what i thought going into it not i, I was thinking oh this isn't going to be a very heady movie it's corporate movie number tw- 237 but but yeah i did uh, op and arby for that didn't dress up for either but yeah i will say that i did feel that same energy even we've only got two movie theaters here where i live owned mm-hmm. by the same person and Everyone I saw was like in pink or some variation of like bright colors and seeing Barbie at the very least. Mm-hmm. And it and it was rare because even with Marvel movies down here, those are events. But like Barbie was an event. Yeah. Like pe- people who I hadn't seen at the movies were going to the movies, even so more so than Mission Impossible, any movie that year, this year. So that was nice to see. And speaking of going to the movies, I really hope that Lionsgate, uh, I don't know how they can do this. Saw 10's coming out Mm -hmm. again as we're recording this. And I really, they recorded a parody of the Nicole Kidman ad. I hope that plays before each screening of Saw 10. I hope that happens. (laughs) It's so good. (laughs) But yeah, it, it was a rare cultural phenomenon. And I don't think, People were trying to make it happen, I think, this weekend with Saw Patrol, but it just didn't have the same energy. I I don't know one person who did Saw and then Paw Patrol. (laughs) Yeah, I don't think it has quite the same cachet. (laughs) Yeah, I I don't think if, say, another DC League of Super Pets comes out and then another Secret Life of Pets comes out, I don't think people are doing those two movies back to back. Right. (laughs) But yeah, so I guess let's get into just kind of overall thoughts on what the movie uh, was like for both of us. Yeah. Well, I went in with my expectations as high as they could possibly be. And that is, I try not to do that because you're going to see a movie and you're planning to review it. You want to try to be somewhat objective about it. But every once in a while, I just can't help it. I I get really jazzed up about certain movies and this was one yeah especially if it's a director I really like or a writer that I really like or a performer that I really what they do I'll let my expectations get a little out of control and this was one where I knew that they were like going in I was like my expectations are so high but I'll be honest they were pretty well met which is exciting yeah because that almost never happens (laughs) but Yeah, like for the most part, I really loved it. I thought, yeah, both Robbie and Gosling were perfect. I can't even begin to think of that movie with anybody else other than them in those roles. Could you imagine Amy Schumer as Barbie? Not at all. I just, yeah. And I like Amy Schumer. For those who don't know, that was the rumor. (laughs) And then she exited. I think my guess is I think that was like before Gerwig was even attached to it like I think yeah I don't know but as far as they went I thought it was really good there were some storytelling things that I thought were maybe not super well done I didn't I thought everything with Mattel was funny but I didn't feel like it worked with the story particularly well I think that would probably be my biggest quibble with it Yeah, it didn't really flow much in the same way where the, hey, I, and vaguely, I guess, talking, I I don't know if you'd consider this spoilers, but I feel like it's non-consequential. The whole movie is 
about Barbie's quest to the real world. Mm-hmm. But and I feel like I, I don't feel like Mattel should have been part of that. I yeah. get why, but like it, it didn't really have the same impact as like realizing what it meant to be a real woman um, in in this uh, scale of this movie. Yeah, I agree. It was, I think it was probably one of those things where they really wanted to talk about, like you mentioned, some of the like consumerism side of it and like the goals for Barbie originally versus what she came to represent and how those two are at odds. And I guess you have to include Mattel in that, but I don't know that it just didn't work super great for me. I felt like that was the it was more of a miss for me than a hit with them. Like I said, I thought the scenes were funny, but they were funny without contributing anything. And there are a couple of things I would have liked to have seen fleshed out, particularly with the mother and her daughter, with America Ferreira. And I can't remember her name right offhand, but... Little Gamora. Yeah, yeah, that was... I felt like that probably could have benefited going deeper into that rather than dealing with the the Mattel stuff personally. I think her name is Ashley Greenblatt. Okay. Yeah. Because I just saw her in Ahsoka. Okay. So yeah, she just has a knack for appearing in franchise movies. Yeah, maybe uh, that must be I, it. <laughs> like Infinity War. Yeah, that was Infinity War. Barbie and now Ahsoka. Mm-hmm. And I think she was in a few other things as well. And I'm going to get staked in the comments for forgetting what a minor role she was in. So right. sorry, I missed Greenblatt about that. But yeah, I just, with the Mattel stuff, I think, but you get an actor like Will Ferrell to be in that section. And I think, I feel like he's a waste, much mm-hmm. in the same way he was a waste in a Lego movie. You get one of the most famous comedians, at least in the terms of movies. Mm-hmm. It would be like getting Adam Sandler to be in this movie. And it's, oh, a, a famous person. I'm going to go see that movie. And then it's just, like, eh, he's in it. Yeah. For what, five minutes? Something Maybe. like that? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, with the mother-daughter stuff, without discussing necessarily my exact qualms with it, because there's a big moment that happens where I'm like, I really want to talk about, but I feel like we can't because it's a huge spoiler. Yeah, but yeah, I just felt like the that I I guess I'll just echo that I really didn't feel like that went anywhere. It just mm-hmm. felt like here is if if I seem hesitant, I'm trying to figure out a way to say this without spoiling anything. Basically, she's I would say the bridge to the real world. I'll just say right. that. And yeah, like I think that, that's fair. That narrative function, I feel, didn't work as well as it needed to. I felt like there needed to be much more of an interconnectedness between Barbie Land. Is that what they called it? Barbie Land? Yeah, Barbie Land. Uh, yeah. Barbie Land and the real world to see, oh, here's how they contrast against one another. And here's why, here's the impetus to going to the real world, other than just what Barbie feels. Yeah, I agree. It just, it felt, that relationship in particular just felt thin to me. And I felt like it could have been, particularly given there's a line that a lot of people have talked about, about like mothers standing still so their daughters can go, they can yeah. see how far their father, their daughters have gone. And a, I don't particularly love that line as a mother and a daughter. I don't know. I didn't love that line. But also, I'm like, if one of your main theses is going to be something with mothers and daughters, I feel like you maybe have to give that some time. And I felt like it was glossed over a bit. I don't know. It just, it was fine. It just didn't work for me as well as I had hoped it would. Yeah, I feel like, you could have done, I don't know, there could have just been something there that isn't there that I really would have loved. Yeah. <laughs> just like even a five minute scene of, oh, let me tell you about how my mother was so you can learn from my mother's mistakes or something like that. Like maybe even connecting, and I'm just going to downright spoil this part because everyone's been sharing it online. Um, 
with the old woman on the bus uh, uh waiting for the bus i think mm -hmm. um like maybe you could have even connected that to um i forget her at character's name america Ferreira. You could have even connected that here's my mom and look at how beautiful she is yeah and something like that yeah really truly that was and it's funny because that's such a beautiful scene and i guess if you're not going and, and honestly i could even deal with it if we weren't really focusing terribly much on the whole idea of mothers and daughters i yeah. think it would be fine if that wasn't one of the themes that it was trying to do i think that's where it messed for, missed for me is if that's what you're trying to say i feel like all the other themes were developed pretty clearly and that one either just don't do it which seems like a better choice for me <laughs> i don't know but i say this as like a nitpick because i still really love it <laughs> oh yeah i think it's in my top 10 it might be in my top five of the year yeah. i think it might be top 10 not top five there That's have been fair. some really good movies out this year um yeah. but I, I feel like that i feel like that section gets dropped the mothers and daughters story kind of just gets dropped the moment the third act happens totally and it almost at least what it felt like to me was almost so, somewhat like a third uh, 11th hour rewrite I'd oh, agree. we need an impetus for why does barbie care about this particular subject and then oh there's a third act mm -hmm. here's why we need to care yeah but yeah talking about that third act actually one one last thing about the mother and daughter thing or specifically the daughter um played by greenblatt i don't know how much you were in the 2000s toy era but when you looked at greenblatt's character did you have the same feeling that i did about who she looks like Ooh, maybe <laughs> okay so like her entire friend group when uh barbie goes to the school i looked at that shot when the trailers came out and i'm like those are brats the high pony and high everything. pony tail yeah <laughs> and i think one was one of the friends was even like wearing the high platform shoes and i'm like are we that. the whole time when i was like uh watching that scene i'm like are they self dropping brats hints in this barbie movie i'd be okay with that if they are <laughs> i can see that i could definitely see them representing brats to some degree and yeah that would make sense because i think yeah at that age they would have had grown up with brats a lot more than with barbie i think barbie kind of fell off some in the like 90s or whatever i don't know barbie's always been popular but i would say that like she was overtaken in the aughts by brats so <laughs> yeah like brats were like everywhere especially in the year like 2007, 2007. Mm, yeah but yeah and speaking of that scene we get one of my favorite lines in the entire movie uh ashley grunblatt's character she has this whole thing and then she calls barbie a fascist and then and then she's like i can't be a fascist i don't control the railways I died. That I totally agree. That is probably the best joke in the movie. <laughs> My entire theater just lost it. <laughs> and you don't know how big of a deal that is. Like we where I we are of a certain this state is of a certain political leading. To have that joke land as big as it did, that was like, oh wow. I did not think that was gonna have a such a big reaction. No, that's totally fair. I no, I absolutely agree. It was definitely one of the high points comedically <laughs> in the movie. Yeah, other than of course. To have a dream ballet with Ryan Gosling, ten out of ten. And, and Simi Lu, like the whole thing is just mm, perfection. I'm just happy so I just I'm just happy Simu is getting work after Shang Chi. I feel like Same. he like after Shang Chi came out, which I will attest to, and the MCU haters can come at me in the comments. I actually really loved Shang Chi for what it was. It almost felt like back to that Iron Man type of movie. 
where it's, hey, yeah, there's interconnectedness, but you really don't need to know a lot about the other movies. And that was really nice. But yeah, I'm really glad Simu's getting work. But yeah, that whole scene, I'm just Ken, fantastic. You might say it was even sublime. Yeah, you might. <laughs> uh, you might. But I, I guess we're gravitating into Ryan Gosling's character anyway. So I guess I'll just say I really loved his character in this. Like, especially where his character goes mm-hmm. as like a... He actually gets an arc this time, as opposed to Toy Story 3, where he's just like a... And yes, Ken was in Toy Story 3, everyone. Yeah. M- Might have even paved the way for Barbie. But yeah, Michael, voiced by Michael Keaton. And he was just like the object of Barbie's affection. Like he was always just the toy. And they go in on that. And I thought that was actually really smart rather than, oh, he's just a himbo, I think is the term. And like they actually did something. I I thought that was really nice. And they gave Gosling back into his comedic roots. Back, I, I, which I think he hasn't done since Nice Guys in 2016. Yeah, a minute. Yeah, and then... His La Land musical chops are in here. And I guess I won't say this is a spoiler because I think it's on the soundtrack. I'll have to check. But the way I just died inside and also laughed out loud when the Matchbox 20 cover hits. Oh my gosh. I'm like, (laughs) oh man. I'm going to play guitar at you. I laughed. My husband plays guitar. Oh, I so he's sitting there beside me, and <laughs> I just looked at him and was like, oh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. And also, can we take two seconds to talk about the unbelievable production value of this movie? If it does not win all of the set awards, like, I don't know. I, I, it's, I just loved it. Barbie Land is one of the best sets I have seen yeah. I know people get super excited about Asteroid City and Wes Anderson. Man, this to me just I, blew mm. it away in terms of visuals on screen by so much. <laughs> I, I know a lot of people, or at least some people, like Asteroid City, but I really did not like it. Now that said, I'm more of a recent Wes Anderson fan because mm. I kept get, getting his name messed up with W.S. Anderson. Okay. I would, for the longest time, anyone said, you want to watch a Wes Anderson movie? I would say, no, I don't like his movies. W.S. <laughs> Anderson. And they'd have to go, no, it's Wes Anderson. And I'm like, so I didn't watch Fantastic Little Fox. The first movie that I watched of his was in 2018 with Isle of Dogs. And then mm-hmm. this year with, oh, and what was the one before this? French Dispatch? Yeah, which is like probably one of his least like him kind of movies i think i don't know like it feels a little outside of what i think of when i think of a wes anderson movie i don't know but anyway i just barbie land is so good and yeah the kens at the campfires on the beach it's just perfect it's perfect like loved it (laughs) yeah and to touch a little bit on your production design thing because i know we got a little bit off on the asteroid city wes anderson tangent but i that architectural digest pretty much sealed this campaign for that. Oh, yeah. Or the, the cribs, I can't remember which one. It was like some kind of like Barbie walks through the, the Barbie dream house and shows everything. I'm like, oh, that's it. Barbie got the production design Oscar right then and there. Yeah, it would certainly help anyway. I don't know. <laughs> because like it, it just feels like you can reach out and touch any of these sets. Mm-hmm. Which is nice in an in an era where I'm watching Ahsoka and I'm like, I feel like this was either inside the volume, which is like their big LED screen thing, or just like a set where it's like a piece of rock and then they're staring at a blue screen or something. Oh, I guess it'd be the vol- volume still in this case. But right. anyways, with the, some of the lightsaber battles. Anyways, I'll stop so- talking about Ahsoka. <laughs> Uh, maybe next week I can have somebody on to talk about Ahsoka. There I you mean, go. Like, <laughs> th- this is my official call out. If anyone's watching Ahsoka, I, uh, I know there are like, I know there are people out there because I see you on threads every time. But yeah, the season ends next week. 
But anyways, back to Barbie. Yeah, it, it, I really loved everything with Ryan Gosling, the production design, everything. I, yeah. I just loved everything about that third act. I yeah. And I feel like the second act act really. Third acts are really hard to do, mm-hmm. especially in a lot of blockbusters. So that transition from second and third to the third act was really beautifully crafted. I don't know if that was Noah or Greta or whoever, but props to whoever did that because the subtle arc with Ryan's character, Ken, I don't know why I almost forgot his name, but it was really beautifully done, I think. And I hope, I'm fingers crossed, I, I, I'm hoping they submit a WB or whatever they're called now submits him for supporting actor along with yeah. uh, Simu if, if Simu is eligible at least yeah along with uh, no not Will Ferrell I feel like there's a lot of good supporting in here yeah but yeah gosh what else I, I know I'm forgetting something <laughs> yeah yeah just overall I thought I just thought that the story yeah for the most part Yeah, I thought it was like just a solidly done movie. I think that it touched on some things. I I don't think it said anything particularly new, but I think that it it, rephrased it. Yeah, it rephrased it and put it in the context of something that people do understand because people get Barbie. And so, or will go see Barbie and have maybe they haven't heard it or whatever. So I, it took some, yeah, again, like not particularly new ideas, but put them into a very mainstream context. And I think that is interesting. I don't hate that. So. <laughs> yeah. And I did remember something when you were talking. Do we want to talk about the, how many soundtracks are there now? Three, four for this oh, movie? Yeah, I don't know. But because ugh. for anyone who's unaware, Here's your Barbie lineup, and one's exclu- an Apple Music exclusive. Okay. You've got Barbie the album, and we're not counting the score, because that, then it'd be five. Then they, the same day Barbie released, you had Barbie the Best Weekend Ever edition, which I think only added like a handful of songs mm-hmm. that were, I'm guessing those were like ones that they couldn't fit in the movie, but just wanted to have out there. And then... You had, I think it might only be three, actually, because the third one would be the DJ mix on Apple Music. Okay. Um, Yeah, I think Mark Ronson had put out just like a playlist, get ready for Barbie playlist. Oh, that too, yeah. That isn't like songs from the movie necessarily. I think it had a couple on it. I think the Dua Lipa song was on it from the start. But yeah, oh my gosh. Yeah, the music was... Mm, again just so good yeah <laughs> that was my whole summer was listening to that mark ronson playlist <laughs> yeah i apple music says that um i think i looked at it today and it says i've listened to the dj mix 250 times oh, on apple music <laughs> partially because the mix it does this little like crossfade to where it like includes the first part of the other song in the last part of the the song before it so there's this really good transition to uh get lucky by daft punk that's just oh and there's like a different version of the dua lipa song of dance okay. night there's like a breakdown version where it like speeds up the tempo a little bit for five seconds it's fantastic i'd recommend that to those who uh, who maybe have apple music I know it's rare that people subscribe to Apple Music, but that that, that DJ mix is really good. Dua Lipa is good. I think the Charlie XCX album, that, that song, that really had to grow on me because I had to see it in the context of the film to understand mm-hmm. like why it sounded good. Because listening to it alone, I'm like, this really sucks from Charlie. <laughs> like having listened to her other stuff, I'm like, eh, right. this is... Of outside of a wheelhouse, and eh, it is too similar. Um, I'll just listen to one of our other albums, right? Right. Um, something else that had to really grow on me was, um, Barbie Girl. By, it has um, not yet grown on me. <laughs> yeah, thankfully they include the Aqua song. Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> on the um DJ mix, and I think the best weekend ever edition. 
But it, it does suck that Barbie, the album, it, the one that came out just like originally when the movie came out, or I think it may be a few days before, I think that's only going to be the one that they submit for yeah, Oscars consideration because I feel like you can't include mixed songs or anything like that, like non-original songs on whatever you're submitting for original song or the I'll just say this Oscars Academy I know you're not listening or watching <laughs> but if you are do it model your awards after me and do a best soundtrack like category because for films like with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 where it's just entirely needle drops mm -hmm. and Barbie where you've got a mix of newly created compositions and and Barbie World, which is a I would I guess you could say it's a remix of so sorts because there's yeah. a because they do include the aqua song in the background of Barbie World. That you just have to listen close because it's so down mixed that it's just it's oh I can I think I can hear it. But but yeah it best soundtrack should be a thing. Um yeah and best I agree. Stunts why are best stunts not a thing that's not less for this movie but still yeah totally agree <laughs> yeah i don't feel like the ryan gosling spinning a spiral was necessarily uh, <laughs> down the a, a best stunt <laughs> i feel like that was more like a wire pull but no, yeah was... but yeah it's got a really great soundtrack really great movie great writing i guess what else would we like to cover I think the other thing that I kind of love are all of the many guest Kens and Barbies. John Cena showing up for seconds. Oh, and we haven't talked about Alan, who is also fantastic. Michael I was Sarah, so excited. Yeah. I'm like, Michael Sarah, who I've loved since he was a little kid on Arrested Development. So <laughs> I have been a Michael Sarah fan forever. And so I loved him in the way that he was an interesting character in kind of as a character who's in the middle of Ken's arc and Barbie's like all of the Barbies like where the Ken's are and when the, where the Barbies are and they have this yeah. intense conflict especially in the third act and he is such an interesting character because he's neither he's the only Alan you have all the Ken's and you have all the Barbies and then you have Alan who just exists and i think he's such an interesting character and again that's another thing i wish there could have been a little more about yeah there are just yeah. all these things that i'm like just get rid of all the mattel stuff even though i love will ferrell and he's one of my favorite comedians i just don't it didn't work get rid of all literally all of the mattel stuff and focus more on alan and like his place in this like middle spot between these two fighting of I don't want to do this but maybe I'm not super with this either I just thought he was a really interesting character and an interesting look at how these kind of worldviews yeah again without trying to say too terribly much yeah can hurt people even if you're part of it I just thought that was just a really interesting kind of thing and I again I wish he could have just got more screen time because he was phenomenal so yeah i'll echo those sentiments but with a different character okay. i will say but before saying that i will say alan was like my guy throughout the entire movie because i just relate to michael Sarah's everything so much <laughs> especially everything he's done since scott pilgrim which is when where i really did, did you just say you didn't haven't seen oh, it? oh no i love scott oh, pilgrim. no okay i was like love it <laughs> <laughs> it is on Netflix. You need to no. <laughs> like do that immediately. Um, I've watched that movie many times. <laughs> yeah, same. I even saw it in like theaters. Me too. <laughs> but but yeah, he's such an introvert. So it, it, it was really nice to see that kind of reflected of, hey, I, I don't care about th this or that. I just want to like chill. But yeah, I think my sentiments, my sentiments that you attend attributed to Alan, I think I would echo on to Midge. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like for a film that is so... I feel like the 
term progressive is a charged term, but I'll just use, use it anyway. You should woke instead. Okay. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll use that. But in a film that no. seems to care so much about identity, about who is Barbie and who is Ken without Barbie, the narrator is just like constantly undercutting. Hey, there's Midge. And even the song with Lizzo undercuts her character constantly where there's like a lyric of, hey, Midge, never mind. <laughs> and it's just, like, why are we doing that? I, I feel right. like it's just unnecessarily. And call me what you want, but I feel like that's especially a character that's seen as this. She's maternal. And again, with that mother and daughter theme, I feel like you could have even just done something with her that would have right. even tied in. And there was, I think, even a cut scene uh, that ended up in the Barbie IMAX release where Mitch is giving birth. And then then again, the narrator just cuts in again and interrupts the birth scene. And I'm just like, OK, I don't. What are we doing here? I feel like if we're going to be so inclusive as to talk about identity in this film, I feel like Midge should have had a say, and Alan certainly should have had a say, given what happens in Act 3. Right. Um, yeah. Other than, hey, I'm just hanging out. They did. I think they did that a little better with Weird Barbie, with Kate McKinnon's character. Yeah. She was the one who was the outsider and is less on the outside at the end but yeah like introducing a bunch of and to be honest midge is a weird barbie doll yeah <laughs> to have a detachable stomach with the baby yeah. that's weird that's an odd choice so i get where they're going with some of that but yeah i think yeah i agree with you i think it's an interesting that yeah the pregnant barbie is the one who is also widely ostracized yeah in a movie that does touch on parenting in some ways that's an odd choice to let her push her off i think that's a fair fair point yeah i think that's all I, i'm really saying is just if you're gonna have one of your themes of, of be about motherhood and like uh, existing as a woman uh to use one of the phrases in the movie mm -hmm. i feel like just it, it was unfair to her uh, other than just the thing you were talking about of it might be weird to explain that her belly just like you can rip off her <laughs> belly and take the baby out. And maybe that's why they cut the scene of the interrupting of the birth and right. all, all that stuff, because maybe the baby just like pops out or something like that. But I, I would have liked that joke because then at least it would have been like, OK, we're recognizing what Midge is as terms of the toy. Right. Right. But, right. but yeah, that's again small nitpick in the grand scheme of things this right. will probably barbie will probably end up being in my top five all year yeah now that said i did rent past lives and i've still got to see the creator and a few other films over the weekend uh, in fact tomorrow i'm recording a podcast with latoya with for a thousand and one mm. Uh, which I have, I have not, not seen, seen that a, one yet. Yeah, I, yeah, it's on Prime Video, but yeah, lots of great movies to see. The lives is that's that could be my favorite of the year. It is stunning to go totally opposite of Barbie in the most understated, quiet movie of the year. But oh my goodness, it is stunning. So yeah, <laughs> you're yeah, in for a treat to watch that one. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm just gonna pick. I still got eight eight or nine days left on that rental period i'm gonna wait till i have just time alone yeah and absorb that movie <laughs> um because i feel like it's gonna be one of those movies where if i don't sit and absorb it and uh try to just push it off or on oh i'm watching it, catching up on movies um then it might just dull the impact what i what happened with how to blow up a pipeline I watched that in a in a binge watch of what were the other two movies Creed three and Blackberry, which I also hope gets a supporting actor nomination for Glenn Howerton, especially for that line read. Um, oh, I haven't seen this one yet. So 
there, there's a line read in Blackberry where he, I won't say the situation he's in, but he's, he basically says, I'm from K Canada where the vampires live. And I'll have to share the, I'll have to sh share the reel or whatever in our Instagram chat, but because I just go back to it every now and again, just to, if I ever want to be like, ah, what are movies like? What is old ultimate camp? I just go back to that clip. <laughs> A recent quote I've been using lately and just it, that's been running around in my head at least. This comes from Spider-Man 2 of all places because I relate to it so much now. Now I'm reaching my late 20s as as hurtful as that says, as it sounds in my head. That's okay. I'm late 40s, so you're good. Okay. <laughs> but there's a scene where Peter is getting his powers back and then he's like swinging for the first time and he's like, I'm back. And then he his web stopped working. Right. And then he lands on like a Honda Civic or something like that. And then he, that transitions from, from back to my back. My back. <laughs> Just one of the greatest. I miss that oh. kind of movie. We, I, sure. I want like that for the MCU, but not like every five minutes. There. Just, just like one. I, I just want one. I don't need Thor Ragnarok. I don't need Taika Waititi and the Screaming Goats from Love and Thunder. I don't need that. Just give me like that one line read where you know somebody just committed to the bit. Yep. I just want one. But but with that said, I think we've covered everything Barbie related, even outside of Barbie. Yeah, we talked. exactly. But with that said, I want to thank everyone for listening or watching to the Austin B Media podcast. I've been your host, Austin Belzer. If you've enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and leave a rating and review wherever you can do that. I don't know where those are. I know Spotify has that. I know Apple, whatever it's called now, Apple Podcasts has that. I hear it's useful in metrics. I don't know because most of, I've actually found out that most people watch this instead of actually listening to it. But with that said, you can follow me on social media at Austin B Media everywhere except for Twitter because they refuse to give me that handle for whatever reason. They keep saying it's taken, but like I go to twitter.com at Austin B Media and it's this user has been suspended. Just give me the handle Twitter, Elon. <laughs> just what do I have to do? I I keep filing support tickets. Give me I it, it's how expensive could it be? Two dollars? Right. <laughs> But Elise, where can people find you? And what I guess you've already promoted your work, but just in, just as a kind of reminder, what have you been working on? Yeah, yeah, you can find me on most things. You can't find me on X because I left. But usually you can yeah. find me at places under Elise Chapins or sometimes Elise D. Chapins because I did not do a good job of branding because I'm old. So that we'll just we'll just blame that. I, but if you want a little behind the scenes. The reason why Austin B Media is my personal Instagram account and my business account is I accidentally, when I signed up for the my Austin B Media Instagram account, I deleted my personal account. Awesome. On, on accident. <laughs> but most places you can find me at just Elise Chapins, which you probably can't spell. So A-L-I-S-E-C-H-A-F-I-N-S. But yeah, it's that's usually where I am. Sometimes there's a D in the middle of that. But yeah. And yeah, subscribe to the Substack. That's probably the best place to find me and Instagram. Those are probably the two places where I'm most most active. Yeah, I think I'm subscribed to your Substack, although free. Um, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> which I really like about Substack. Maybe I'll do something with that. I don't know. Yeah. If you're a patron. And, most. Uh, uh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, most of what I post is free. My reviews are always free. Sometimes I'll throw stuff on under a paid but for the most part that's like more personal essay kind of stuff so if you're just looking for a straight review those are always free yeah same i all my early access stuff 24 hours and then for patrons and then it goes public but yeah i will have links to all that in the show notes whether it be on youtube let's see spotify for podcasters or that's my side of things but and then the article when it comes out